We know the Vesola Hatred is coming October 8th. We know it's going to have a new class, new region, more campaign, mercenaries, and a raid component. That's what on Sunday, the past Sunday, that's the information that was dropped that Best of Hatred, October 8th, and all this new content. Great. That's not what this video is about. What I want to do in this video is go back to the data mine leak that happened back in October of 2023. And I want to show you the parallels between what that data mine is saying and how it correlates with what we have just been notified of and the big announcement of the Vessel of Hatred. And I dare say that this data mine is 100% accurate. It's really remarkable what they said in this data mine and that it's actually one by one all becoming true. So I'm going to take the leap of faith and assume, now again, guys, this is my opinion. I'm not saying it's fact. I'm just saying, I believe that everything I'm about to share with you right now is actually gonna come to fruition in the vessel of hatred. And we can fact check this later, just like how I'm fact checking the data mine uh, video that I did back in October. Anyway, let's get right to it. So this is the article that I'm referring to. And as you can see, it's from Pure Diablo and it was posted on October 28th, 2023, and the Diablo 4 Vessel of Hatred expansion at BlizzCon 23. And basically this article is about a data mine leak that happened and it got a lot of information. And the leaks and rumors about the expansion, the article goes on to say, have already appeared online as a result of Blizzard uploading a technical alpha build of version 2.0 to its private testing branch. Data mining from that version has reportedly revealed that the first expansion will be called Vessel of Hatred. And boy, oh boy, were they bang on. Now remember guys, Everything we are reading is information pulled from this data mine back in 2023. So just keep that in mind. But I am going to say that this is all going to be, this is all going to come true. So it goes on. I'm not going to go into every single detail, but the new area, okay? I'm not going to get into, into the lore and all that stuff and how Mephisto comes into play and all that kind of stuff. Although I will link this article again in this video's description and you can take a look at it for yourself. But basically, so the new region, the new region is going to be Karast, which is immediately southeast on the current sanctuary map. It is not a new map. I've been asked that question on my streams. Is it a new map? It's not a new map. It's existing in the sanctuary. And as you can see here, you can see in our current map, if you were to go into Diablo 4 today in sanctuary, this area is grayed out just like in this photo. And this is where the expansion is going to take place. Nahantu, sorry, I keep butchering the name. This is believed to be the newest region to be added in the game with the next expansion. Guys, this is being said in October of 2023. And bingo, bango, they are right. They were right. And it goes on to say this is where the campaign is expected to eventually lead players through the durance of hate, which we're familiar with, Mephisto stronghold under Trevinchal to the gates of the necropolis, then into the ethereal spirit realm, and finally to the five hills and the tomb of Akarat, founder of Zacharum Faith. The main quest may also feature a type of fortune teller known as diviners that, and here's where it gets juicy, boys. Sit down. 
You better sit down for this one. That will introduce Ruin Stones into the game. Now, for those of us that adored and loved Diablo 2 and have been screaming for Ruin Worlds in some fashion to come into the game, this is music to their ears. And boy, oh boy, this is a juicy take. Um, so this is going to be Nahantu, which we know is um, is the new area. We know it's a jungle theme, so the geography of the land is quite varied from the thick flora and fauna of the Trojan jungles. So again, D2 reference, Flayer Jungle, to the barren expansion of the Ganze Plateau. It is also home to the Field of Giants, as well as the dark, dank depths of the Karast sewers. The region will be populated with multiple zones as usual, which will offer several new side quests. Players will be taken to a journey through Nahantu's many dungeons, including, and now we actually have specific names. So the dungeons will include the Forge of Malice, Sleepless Hollow, Forgotten Remains, and Ruin Wild. But out of all this, the fact that Ruin Worlds are potentially coming back into the Diablo franchise, wow. And guys, if you're not familiar with Ruin Worlds, it's just another layer in itemization where you are crafting gear uh, through the Ruin World mechanic. And it just, it'll be a beautiful enhancement to the current tempering and masterworking in the game today. And again, it adds another extra layer for players to chase and grind. All good things, in my opinion. Okay, so the next area goes into the Trojan jungles and Tanganze plains. And basically... All I want to talk about here is that the Trojan jungles, also referred to as Toraje, are located in the southern part of Sanctuary. So that new area that's going to be the expansion, southwest of Karast. And its vast jungle span across the southern part of Sanctuary, all the way up to Kazakhstan's uh, borders. This exotic land is filled with vibrant and dangerous floral and fauna that are unique to the region of Sanctuary. Again, this correlates with the fact that Vessel of Hatred is a jungle theme. Many civilizations that called the jungles their home were lost to time. Today, the region is home to the Umbra tribes, which are witch doctors, Opea, and Tusk Lords. We've heard that word Tusk Lords before. A clan of Druids. Creatures from the beginning hells were also sighted in the Trojan jungles after the destruction of the World Stone. Interestingly, the Tusk Lords were first mentioned through the flavored text of a Druid shop cosmetic in Diablo 4. Deep in the jungle of Trojan lie the domains of the Tusk Lords, known for their great strength. These Druids array themselves in the tusks of their animal ancestors. So this discusses some of the enemies that we are going to encounter in the Vessel of Hatred. Again, this is not high level stuff. This is very detailed and there's nothing in here that I'm reading. Again, this is back in October of 2023 that doesn't align with what actually was announced by Blizzard this past Sunday with the announcement of the Vessel of Hatred coming. So this to me, all makes sense and aligns with what's happening with the Vessel of Hatred. Okay, so next, whew, my favorite part, and I know the community is split on this. A lot of people are not for raids, and there's a part of the player base that are for raids. And the people that are not for raids, I think what the worry is, again, guys, correct me if I'm wrong. I think what the worry is with raids, well, there's a couple of them. Number one, it's an ARPG, not an MMO. So why put a raid in Diablo 4? There's that argument, sorry. And then there's also the argument, well, not everybody can group up and not everybody has friends to play with 
and this is a grouping up event. Uh, so I know there's some discussion going on right now with that camp. Well, if there better be a possibility of raids being being able to be done solo. Now, to me, again, my opinion, and I have no idea what they're going to do, but that defeats the purpose of raids. Raids is done in a group. It's not done in solo. So I don't think that's what's going to happen, but only time will tell. Anyway, regional boss battles raids. Oh my God, I still can't believe it. The next expansion is expected to introduce a new endgame mechanic called raids. These are instant events that are common in MMO style games where players can join lobbies to link up with party members and or the and or other players present in the open world. This new feature will address the desire already expressed by many players for more convenient and effective mechanism to grow to group up with other players. The Kazra Raid. So it actually has the name of the raid. The Kazra Raid will likely involve five levels that increase in difficulty. And this correlates with other data mines that came out and showed that the raid had level of difficulties. And there's also going to be an NPC that you can craft raid specific stuff. Again, from another data mine that I pulled information from. Now that is speculation and does not get mentioned in this document, but we will wait and see all juicy stuff, guys. Okay. Uh, the Kazara raid will likely involve five levels that increase in difficulty, each of which would need to be completed prior to progressing to the next. That's how raids work. No surprise there. An analogous scenario would be if the current five endgame boss battles were strung together in one combined event. In this example, when a player succeeds in defeating Varshan with their raid party, they would then be eligible to enter the lobby to proceed forward to Grigor's boss battle, and so on. Each successive level would offer greater rewards, better gear, etc. Now, I think this is an, it does say in this example, it's not saying this is what it's going to be. So um, I don't know what the raid is going to entail. I like the fact that there's level of difficulties. And I like the fact that obviously you have to beat one phase to go to the next phase. So that I like, but it doesn't really get into detail. It just provides an example that they could use the ladder bosses as staging events in the raid. But the fact is, holy moly, the raid is going to be called the Kazra Raid. Now, remember, guys, I'm saying that because everything in here back in October, I'm going to keep repeating this. This was an, this was data mind was released October 2023 is all because coming true one by one okay then it goes into the new class the information data mined from the technical alpha provided the following description of a new class and i'm not going to go into it goes into here that a large part of the data commu uh, diablo community wanted a paladin crusader cleric something like that right but it says in this document the spirit born the release of the Spiritborn class opens up a whole new way to experience Diablo 4. And we already know, Blizzard themselves have already said, this is a brand new spanking new class never seen before in the Diablo franchise. Now, the Spiritborn, we're going to get a good look at on July 18th. But this document already gives us a good look into what we should expect. The spirit born, a class deeply rooted in the elements of nature and spiritual realm. Realm, They are the children of the wild, born from the spirit of the plains, the sky, soil, and forest. Their souls are intertwined with the world around them, drawing strength from the very essence of life and nature. Their weapon of choice is the glaive, which we know it is, a symbol of their connection to both the physical and spiritual realms. The glaive is is more than just a weapon to a spirit born. It's an extension of their spirit, a conduit through which, which they channel their power. 
and it goes into greater detail here. The spirit born's power comes from two resources, vigor and allegiance. Vigor represents their physical vitality and endurance gained from their bond with the earth and sky. It fuels their physical abilities and allows them to perform feats of agility and strength beyond normal capabilities. Allegiance, on the other hand, represents their spiritual connection to nature and its creatures. It is through allegiance that they can call upon the spirits of nature for aid, summoning eth ethereal allies or invoking powerful elemental skills, spells. Wow. The spirit born are not merely fighters. They are guardians of balance. They stand on the boundary between the physical and spiritual realm, ensuring harmony between the two. Their mission is not just to defeat their enemies, but to preserve the nature, natural order of things. In battle, a spirit born is sight is a sight to behold. They move with gr with the grace of the wind, their glaives dancing like leaves in a storm. Their attacks are fluid and relentless like a river carving its path through stone. And when they call upon their spiritual powers, the air around them crackles with raw elemental energy. Whether you're drawn to their unique blend of physical prowess and spiritual power or their noble mission to preserve balance in the world, playing a spirit born offers a truly unique experience in sanctuary, my God. This, I got to say, this sounds like a very intriguing class and absolutely Blizzard is bang on by saying this is a class that has never been in Diablo before. Um, that is evident in just the what we've read here. So we, again, this data mine back in 2023 says it's going to be a spirit born in the expansion and it's a spirit born it is. So you have to take this at face value. Now, this is the cherry on top of the cake, boys and girls. The data mine goes on to talk about mercenaries, which has been confirmed in the communication with the Vessel of Hatred drop and coming um, in October 8th. We know we're getting mercenaries and it talks about mercenaries and then it goes into ruins, which surprise, surprise guys, I believe Blizzard is holding out on this announcement right till the very end. But Sammy Caps is here today, dropping it, dropping the mic all over the Diablo 4 community. Ruins are coming back. They are coming back. I guarantee it. Mercenaries. Let's go back to mercenaries. We're going to get a little bit more information about the mercenaries. Similar to the familiar followers... In Diablo 2, it appears that mercenaries will be returning to the game at some point, while the some point is October 8th, in the future, with the variety of new and different skill packages. So, there's going to be a Berserker Crone, a Bounty Hunter, a Cursed Child, and a Maiden Mongrel Scholar Shield Bearer to aid the player. Okay? It's been said that they will have their own dedicated skill tree like the followers in Diablo 3. Well, surprise, surprise, surprise. We've already been told through Blizzard that they mercenaries are going to have their own skills and that we're going to be able to upgrade them. And this data mine, again, back in 2023, pulled the same information. So you know it's going to become true. And, and the mercenaries... It is true. And now the piece de resistance for a lot of people that are in favor of this ruins. And here we go, baby. As alluded to earlier, corrupted ruin stones will eventually be returning to the game. I predict October 8th. You mark this on the calendar, boys. Which will be crafted via, via NPCs known as diviners. We've heard this term earlier in this document. So we're going to have an NPC known as diviners. 
Some time ago, it was suggested that runes would be part of Diablo 4. This included condition runes that would yield a specific consequence, such as triggering the next socket ruin when a certain condition is met in the game. There were also effect ruins that would, upon being triggered, reward the player with an effect, such as a damage buff. The initial plan to add ruins was abandoned, either because it was decided that the system was too complicated or due to the lack of sufficient manpower to implement it. However, it now seems they are finally due to make their first appearance. Condition ruins and the effect ruins every three seconds without moving, activate the next socketed ruin. When a pet dies, activate the next socketed ruin. And we know there are pets in the game. When you are stunned or frozen, activate the next socketed ruin. Those are the conditioned ruins. The effect ruins, the three that they highlight here is when active, gain a random shrine effect for seven seconds when this ruin is active. And you guys notice the names? <laughs> they kept the same names from Diablo 2. Crazy. Okay, so the Ist ruin, when active, your next thorn hit deals 30% more and thal is an effect ruin when active gain 500 damage barrier now again this is a data mine they had these images which again were pulled from the data mine so we'll see if this comes i truly believe ruins are coming to diablo 4 this data mine um has been bang on all the way up and down this document. And again, I'm going to highlight it. This was done on October 28th, 2023. Well, there you have it, folks. Ruins, Ruin Worlds are coming back to Diablo 4, in my estimation. I went back and looked at this data mine leak, and it is dotting the I's and crossing the T's and... There's a huge correlation between that data mine leak back in 2023 to what has been communicated to us on what's happening with the Vessel of Hatred on October 8th. You can't deny there are a lot of similarities to what that document said and what the Vessel of Hatred is, is marketing it as what's coming for the Vessel of Hatred. There, You got to be blind not to see the connection and the how accurate that document was so i suggest to you that ruined worlds are coming back to diablo 4 in the vessel of hatred they're just not ready to make that announcement and we learned the new raid name we learned a lot through that document i everything that i covered in the previous segment to me i suggest is all going to come to fruition in diablo 4 let me know what you guys think what are your thoughts? Do you, do you agree with me that this just, there's too many similarities. You can't turn a blind eye to this data mine. It is 100% accurate. It looks like it anyway. So I would love to hear your comments. I would love to hear your thoughts. Wow, guys, Vessel of Hatred is, um, it's gonna be a banger. It's gonna be a banger. Now, I've said this in my last video, this looks good on paper, but, Paper is not good enough. It actually has to be translated and effective in game. So they still have to deliver the product in the game. Uh, but it is looking like a banger on paper. Let me know what you think. And a couple of more things. Come and join. We can have a huge discussion. I live stream every evening on Twitch. Channel name is Sammy Caps. I go live approximately 7, 7.30 Eastern Standard Time p.m., I would love to have you get in there if you want to talk about whatever, anything ARPG, MMOs, Diablo 4, you name it. We talk about everything on my channel. I would love to have you. And also, a lot of you watch my content and are not yet subscribers. So if you could like, comment, subscribe to my YouTube channel, I would really appreciate it. It will help grow my channel immensely. And in order for me to do the things that I want to do, we got to get bigger and better. And I'll take care of the better. You take care of the bigger. And it's going to be a banger of a channel. We are going to continue to turn over 
every rock when it comes specifically to Diablo 4, but anything ARPG, I'm all over it, guys. So please hit the subscribe button. It would mean the world to me. Anyway, let me know what you think, guys. And as always, thank you for watching my channel and supporting my channel. I really do appreciate it. We'll see you in Sanctuary. Talk to you next time. Take care. The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.